This is Lewis Art for Boxing Social in association with Empire Fighters. So delighted to join with Alfie Sharman here. I think the first time we've actually uh, interviewed, but um, yeah, how's things, mate? How are you? I'm very well. Yeah, I think it is the first time. I won't take it personally. Yeah. But no, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's a great day. Um, it's good to see you. Um, Mondays don't get much more exciting than this, I think. So yeah, no, all good. Absolutely, yeah. We'll jump straight into it. Obviously, Queensbury on the zone now. Um, Massive announcement last uh, last night. Um, yeah, huge, and it must be something that you're, you're you obviously as the zone you are delighted about. Extremely happy. Um, we've been working on it for a little while now. Obviously, very familiar with what the guys over at Queensbury have been doing for many years. There's a legacy in sport. I'm, they're very familiar with obviously what the zone have been doing um, since we've um, since we've been around in the boxing space. Um, and there's an obvious synergy. It's commercial venture so we need to make sure the timing is right of course it's not formally until April 1st but now is the right time to uh, announce sensible time constructive time for all um, and yeah I mean I'm personally very excited it just means more boxing for us you know the roster is unbelievable their experience and skin in the game is unrivaled um, and look they're joining some of the best promoters in the world so um, yeah I think it can only be exciting for boxing fans and it's obviously great for us. And that is obviously joining with Matchroom as well. And I guess to have the two, you know, two leading promoters in the UK, I mean, if you would have told someone that a year ago or, or sort of a year and a half ago, it would have been, I mean, a mad thing to say. So for yourself, obviously, working the broadcast, to have the two main promoters must be, um, yeah, that, that's an added incentive and, and it's huge for, for, the, for the platform. Huge for the platform, yeah. Um, it's the... I, I'm, said this a few times it's the 29th promoter that we're working with which no one has ever got to that volume of before um, so it's not a surprise obviously uh, it's something that we'll do again we'll work with other promoters and we'll bring people together maybe that people would in in, in the past wouldn't have expected um, but look the times have changed the world is changing the boxing world moves incredibly um, quickly um, and here we are and I'm just really really excited to see where we can take the next next step because we're working with people who are thirsty to innovate and thirsty to push on more regardless of what they've already achieved in the sport and we've obviously got we've done it extremely well in a short period of time but by no means finished there's a lot more for us to do so I'm just very very excited. You mentioned there about the 29 promoters that you work with any worries of oversaturation do you think? No it's a good question uh, no I don't we work very the only time it could become a challenge is scheduling um, but of course by having exclusive deals with a lot of the promoters we have a whole team who look at scheduling and making sure that they work for our subscribers work for the promoters believe it or not these promoters don't necessarily want to clash at the same time uh, as well because it obviously cannibalizes their event um, so no there's no there's no concern over saturation given I know the measures that we have in place to make sure the scheduling is is optimal for the consumer ultimately um, but look I mean it's, it's the more promoters means the there's nowhere that promoters can hide the fighters can hide you know there's no there's very few barriers um, for fighters uh, you know for fights to not happen um, so no not over saturation if anything I think we needed more boxing on our platforms um, and it's great that we're getting closer to getting to a level that we all deem to be appropriate and with with the platform, I guess with the with the new signing, um, do you think that there will be plans in place? For, I, mean, I guess it's more a question for Frank, but do you think there be, could be plans made for Queensbury? I know they promote in Saudi, but promote more globally potentially in the lights of America. Yeah, it's a question for Frank, uh, Frank um, specifically, but but you know, yes is the answer. You know, there are you know, boxing is a global sport, and um, the fighters on Queensbury's ros uh, roster have global appeal. They've proven that year in year out. Um, sorry, mate. and the. Um, and you know where they are at the moment, this moment in time, they've got an unbelievable amount of world champions on their platforms in, in multiple weights. Um, those fighters want to be fighting um, to audiences all over the world. Of course, a lot of them are British fighters and very proud of being superstars in their home home country. But who doesn't want to take their talent and their abilities and their I suppose they're stardom to a global stage and we can obviously help with that um, which is why people work with us um, as well as our commitment of course to the sport boxing but yeah it's a question for, for Frank but I would I would suggest the answer is yes yeah. and it's, it's a difficult question but how much do you think Riyadh season has to do with us I know you mentioned there is a separate deal but let's be honest like if Riyadh season didn't, didn't come into play I don't think this would really be possible would you say? Mm, I wouldn't necessarily agree with saying it wouldn't be possible, but it certainly it certainly presented an opportunity to bring people together in a in more speedy manner, um, given that 
seven shows now Riyadh season in 12 months I mean, it's quite an amazing amount of shows and you look at the scale of those there if you were to list down now forgetting the name of the event or the promoter or the rights holder who the what, what the biggest fights of the last 12 months have been a good chunk of them are going to be Riyadh season cards so of course being exposed to the ways of which Queensby work and vice versa is probably expedited the conversations but I don't think that it, it's not necessarily that it wouldn't have happened anyway you've heard from you know you've been here today you've heard from George you've heard from Frank their aspirations for, for the business they love boxing still the same way that they did from when Frank started back in the 70s they still speak about it with the same level of passion um, and it's fantastic they can see that level of passion from the zone as well in the sport of boxing um, so yeah, sorry. What was your question? Yeah, no, that was um, the answer. I was just saying, yeah, just talk about how I guess like 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 the Riyadh season deal, like having yes, something. No, to do. Sorry, yeah. A more succinct answer is uh, it helped, but it, it it isn't down to that. Um, it's just a very separate deal fundamentally, um, and we're obviously very familiar with each other's businesses. Um, we're not going anywhere. They're not going anywhere. So I would suggest it's probably something that was inevitably going to happen at some point anyway. If I ask you from a broadcaster point of view, you know. If you look at it on the same point of view, you're going to be happy with having the two main promoters, but is it right when it comes to the growth of boxing to be concerned, say, we don't know what the future is with TNT, say, like, let's say, for example, they sort of don't really want to pursue anything boxing past 2025. Is there a way with less broadcasters involved in boxing as we see, like, Showtime have left in America as well, like, that damages the sport of boxing with less broadcasters involved? No, I don't think so. I think if you take a step back and kind of process some of the criticisms that the sport of boxing has maybe got in the last decade certainly it's in, in my conscious uh, you know what, since I've been very conscious of it it's actually criticizing the broadcasters for inhibiting the sport you know uh, sometimes I don't agree with that sometimes maybe it's fair um, but you know it's a big money sport um, pleasing multiple parties isn't dif is, isn't easy um, and sometimes can be a blocker to to not pursue certain ventures um, so I would actually argue that it's the antithesis of um, uh, of that. I'd say it actually presents a bigger opportunity. It's the fact that it's all in one pro one place, fewer subscriptions. Um, you know, not only do we have the uh, you know the full events, we. Um, we also have more content, more non-live content to support. You know as well as I do, there are stories to fights that people want to be seeing. They're all on our platform, weigh-ins, press conferences. We're on the ground all week, every week. Um, we bring the boxing experience to consumers more than just the 35 minutes of a main event on fight night. It's more than that. Uh, and we, we bring people closer to the action. So um, I think it's a good thing. I would say that, but I do genuinely, speaking to you honestly, do genuinely believe that it's a good thing as opposed to any negative, yeah. Okay, because it's only I say that because you know when you look at other broadcasts, comparing them, when you look at like Sky and you look at TNT, they've obviously got the Premier League, which is always a selling point, and it yeah. it always pushes down. It's always going to be a question that's going to be asked with the zone. Like if you look at Sky and you look at TNT, and I always sort of talk to my friends, like they'll always be interested in them broadcasters because they show the football, and they show everything that a wider audience can can book. And let's be honest, like boxing in itself is a niche sport, um, and and with the zone, I think it's obviously tailored highly towards sort of the boxing fans. So like, is there ever any worry where you know? the struggle to appeal of a bill to like the casual box fan or the outside box fan because you haven't got that other sport that can do that not a concern well look we have we, uh, we obviously have in the UK as an example we have UA for Women's Champions League we have Saudi Pro League um, we're a multi-sport offering even in the UK you're absolutely right boxing is very much the nucleus of our business proposition at this moment in time um, but we are a global multi-sport um, broadcaster that you know should rights become available that make commercial sense for us, we'll explore it. Um, but it's not a concern. You know, boxing is growing in popularity. Um, we are committed to that growth and we've been ahead of the curve, I like to think, with that growth, with the investments that we've made in the sport. If you cast your mind back five years ago when we were starting to do, you know, growth opportunities in the US, um, opening as a broadcaster in the US and obviously transacting with Golden Boy and Matchroom, etc. You know, I remember being asked questions at the time, you know, like why boxing? And now look where we are, where we have minimum of 150 fights a year. We look on track to deliver close to 180, I think, this year. Um, you don't need to, I mean, domestic football, like in the UK, Premier League is the number one. It's un undeniable, you know. Um, we're not going to sit here and, and say that, it, you know, it isn't. But you can still do extremely well in, in, in the sports space. Consumers are, believe it or not, able to enjoy more than one thing at one time. Um, and, and they are doing that. And we're seeing that um, with our exponential growth and also the global appeal that we're able to bring. Um, there are markets that 
five years ago didn't have the opportunity to watch boxing and now the zone's presence in that market has meant that we're bringing superstars to the tv screens to their, any device that they want um, which makes us very proud to be able to do that so there's always two sides there's going to be i'm not going to lie and say you know would would premier league football enable us to reach more people well, of course it would yeah, of course it would but we don't have that uh, and we can operate just fine without it um, and we're doing that and we will continue to do that so, so you, don't, you wouldn't say it hinders the sport but when you don't have like that i wouldn't say it hinders it at all because if you're there to watch boxing you're there to watch boxing um, it makes my job in marketing specifically um, may be slightly more of a challenge because we have to go and find those audiences in an, in an efficient manner to convert them and bring them over to the zone, make them aware of the zone and why the zone is a place to watch fight. And most importantly, in a lot of instances, as you know, with boxing, you know, you need to sell the stories of fights to why an average consumer wouldn't, you know, Tyson Fury, AJ, Canelo, Ryan Garcia, etc., etc. These guys have millions of fans that they bring wherever they go. The slightly lesser um, known fighters that have no less fascinating stories. It's our job to unpack those and the promoter's jobs, most pertinently, to elevate the profile of the sport and the stories within the sport to that level. That's on all of us to do that. Um, there's no point sitting here being negative about not having Premier League. We should be. We should look at it in a positive lens and think, well, how can we make more people aware of this sport? Um, because we believe they'll love it when they get there, and we're doing that already. It's just we need to do it more and more and year on year. Final one from myself. Um, I did actually want to ask you about Oscar La Hoya and his like behaviour in terms of the clapback Thursdays and all the sort of like he's very outspoken on social media. When you look at it from a from a broadcaster point of view, like it, I mean, like when he does these things, that he's clearly making enemies. Um, and he obviously being a broadcast partner of Golden Boy, as I say, like do you think that's a concern or a hindrance when you look at that sort of behaviour and the way he speaks with obviously Eddie Hearn, who you broadcast for the UK? Like, is that a concern? It's not a concern. They're, look, they're, they're big boys, they're personalities, they're very intelligent people, um, very successful people. Um, they'll be okay. Um, our priority is to continue to put on shows. They will collaborate again in the future. Um, uh, and what they do on social media uh, on certain days of the week is their business, not mine. Um, we only really care about the shows and until they start to be impacted, which they're not and they won't, um, I don't have much interest in that. <laughs> Perfect. Alfie, appreciate your time, mate. Thank you. Top man. Thank you. Cheers.